Welcome. My task is to bring you back down to earth. Um, I was here, this is a bit of an existential experience for me. I was, I was here last night uh, for Opera North, and I was sitting around about row A in the middle there, and uh, we were watching the extraordinary Benjamin Britten opera, Peter Grimes, and towards the end, roughly about 10 past 10 last night, um, Peter Grimes moves to the back of the stage and takes himself off uh, for a watery death to the acclaim of his community. Now, whether that's my destiny uh, at the end of talking to you in the next 10 minutes is up to you to judge. But what I want to do is to respond a little bit to the challenge uh, that was set to us uh, by our very distinguished previous speaker, which, of course, um, is how do we create new supermen, superwomen uh, for the years ahead of us. And I want to take a few moments talking um, a bit about this place that we're in here, this place of Salford, Manchester, the Northwest, our spot on the world. So imagine we were looking at this in terms of Google Earth, what that's meant through history and what it can mean in the future, and what role I think our education institutions, in my case, a university, uh, play for this. So please relax. This isn't a, um, a paid sponsor's slot for the University of Salford, but I'll put a few digs in now and again. Um, I want to talk a little bit more generally about that, and I think you'll see a theme that I want to talk about is the extraordinary energy that we have in cities today and cities in the future. So let me take you on a different sort of journey, which isn't uh, out uh, into uh, space, but which also, as you'll see, um, has something of the universe to it. Now, I'm a strong believer in the power of stories. I think stories help situate us. We all have our stories. What I find being, having the privilege of being associated with the university is I hear the most extraordinary stories. And a lot of those stories are not the stories from the top, the stories of leaders, the stories of people who've really made it. They're the stories of ordinary men and women, in my case, obviously, many of them students, and their journey uh, that's brought them to where they are today. And many of you in the audience here will have similar extraordinary stories. So stories tell us a lot. And stories help me to organize my sense of what our challenge is when we are thinking about how to make those supermen and superwomen for the future. So let's get ourselves back down to earth with a thud. We were up there right above, looking down um, on Dubai, for example, looking down on all those wonderful uh, places that we can see from outer space. Let's get right down uh, into the detail here to this place called Salford. And the first thing, and I want to play around with two concepts in what I want to say to you this afternoon. The play between universe, we heard about that in the previous talk, and the play between universe and city. City is where we are now. We're in a city. And we're in a city here uh, called Salford. For those of you who are from Salford, you will know that the River Irwell roughly has the status of an international border. Yep, getting a few laughs there, right? So some people know exactly what I mean. If you're in Salford, you're not in Manchester. Very important. You are in Salford here, by the way. You're not in Manchester. Manchester's over there. Um, that football club's not in Manchester either, by the way. It's in Trafford, but that's another, an, 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 another, another point. Um, so cities... Um, are places of intersection. Here's an early railway map of Manchester and Salford. And you can see that, that how this place starts off, as, as the generous introduction put it, I'm an archeologist by training, I know about places. Manchester was a Roman city. It's been a destination for centuries. And it was a destination uh, at the beginning of this extraordinary thing that we call the Industrial Revolution, which took off in the 1700s and early 1800s and defined this place. So cities are places of intersections. They're where things come together. Whether they were railway lines in the past, road systems, or whether now they're fiber optic cables and very sophisticated forms of connection. They're destinations, of course. So cities are places people come to. They're drawn here. Stuff happens in cities. Now, you, you've all come into the city. Some of you might live a long way out of the city. You come into the city to work, you come to eat, you come to play, you come to functions such as these. Cities draw people together. In parts of our world today, cities have an extraordinary effect. They're extraordinary magnets. So in the south, where some of our most rapid cities are growing at the moment, people are learning to live in communities of more than 20 million people in one small place. 
And people in India, people in Africa, people across Asia will give everything to get to the city because the city as a destination is the hope for survival. It's the place where economic activity is. So cities are de destinations. They bring people together. Because of that, they are places of immense energy. Let's carry on on this journey. Because they're destinations, they're places of extraordinarily diverse identity. And there's a nice phrase here, uh, which in fact uh, I've pinched from the cultural theorist Homi Baba. He says cities are places where people learn to live side by side with strangers, not face to face, side by side. And our city, our city region of Manchester, which is the centre of Manchester and nine other local authority areas that make up the city region, two and a half million or so people altogether. Those of us who live here would argue it's definitely Britain's uh, second uh, leading city after London. Anybody here from Birmingham, Leeds would probably disagree, but we can argue about that later. Extraordinarily diverse. Recent work has just shown that there are over 200 languages spoken in Manchester. 200 languages, that's more than London. 200 languages. At my university alone, and I didn't believe this, and I had them go and check it. At my university alone, we currently teach students from more than 160 countries here in Salford. Now, there are only about 195 countries in the world, so it's easy to say, who's not there? And let's go out and find some. Um, but basically, it's an incredibly cosmopolitan community. Now, it's cosmopolitan, of course, for those of our students who've never had the opportunity to go outside the Northwest or to go outside Britain. Because coming into the city and coming to the university is the first opportunity they will get to meet with such a cosmopolitan range of people. And we forge our identities in cities. It's where the merging happens. It's where the shifts happen in language codes. It's where new languages emerge. It's where new identities emerge. Walking around my campus, going into the library, for example, any day of the week, I'm always struck by how diverse and varied our communities are. And that will go for virtually any institution in any city in Britain today. So lots and lots of action, lots and lots of interaction, lots and lots of identity formation. Let's uh, move on. What else? Now let's go to another set of words that go with this play I'm exploring between universe and city. Port, portal, legacy. Let me explain what I mean about those as defining characteristics of cities today. Well, here's a, ritty, a, a, a pretty poor photograph um, of what uh, Salford Keys right here looked like 100 years ago. I've chosen 100 years um, because, of course, 1914 is an interesting year. We're going to have lots of celebration next year because it's the anniversary, the 100th anniversary of the outbreak of the First World War. So a lot of reflection on what it means to have moved from 1914 uh, to 2014. So let's just take that flashpoint in time, 1914. In 1914, Salford Keys, and this is a picture um, of what it would have been like 100 years ago, just outside the Lowry Theatre today. You won't find any one of those buildings surviving now. That's what the fabric of the city would have looked like 100 years ago. 100 years ago, Salford Keys, despite the fact that it's not by the sea, was the third biggest port in Britain. At one stage in the 19th century, three quarters of the entire British GDP was generated in the Manchester-Liverpool area. This was the dynamic hub, the port, that served the world economy. Now, we're very familiar, uh, of course, with these images of what these industrial cities looked like. We're familiar from literature. Uh, we've had novels about the city, novels about Manchester since north and south. We know, of, of course, what uh, life was like there. Just as an aside, Frederick Engels came here in the 1840s. Uh, and formed his whole ideas around the uh, condition of the working class. He came to Salford uh, because his father owned the mill. Um, and he came to learn how to be a mill owner. But he described houses and conditions which we as archaeologists, uh, which we as archaeologists have recently excavated in Salford. So we know what this fabric was about. We know what this city looked like. We know it, of course, most famously from L.S. Lowry's pictures, which have recently been celebrated in an exhibition in the Tate in London. So 100 years ago, a port. Let's fast track on today. It's a bit of a corny play, actually, port to portal, but you know. Um, what is it today? Well, Salford Keys, as you drove in, as you drove in today, of course, is not as it was 100 years ago. It's the home of the BBC, the home of BBC Breakfast, 
the home of lots of other stuff, including Blue Peter and other nationally terribly important programs, um, and also uh, the home uh, of ITV. And we know uh, that it has moved into the new generation of the future centre of the world uh, because Granada have rebuilt the set of Coronation Street just across the water from here. And if you manage to get an opportunity to go up to the top of one of those towers and have a little look outside, you can look down inside uh, and see the whole thing uh, laid out. So what we've got coming in here is some pretty serious players uh, in the media industry now and the media industry of the future. Perhaps more important, Doc 10 Studios, which is just across uh, uh, the bridge outside the Lowry here, um, is the largest concentration of high performance digital studios in Europe. Inside there, uh, there's one studio that can take an, order of, it can take an audience of 6,000 people uh, for a live digital broadcast at a high performance, high spec level. So we've seen this shift to portal and the flows into the city now are about uh, high resolution images, about data, about digital interactions. But behind that, of course, we always have legacy. Legacy matters, goes back to my theme of storytelling. When we think about people, when we think about cities, we also think about legacy. We think about the past, the streets that have been destroyed, the memories uh, that are important to people who live um, in these urban environments. Cities are gateways. They're places that open us up onto the world that take us uh, into the future. We come to cities so we can access the rest of the world, and we do that increasingly through networks. So today, we're digitally connected. Many of you are sitting there, and I hope you are sitting there with your digital devices. Uh, uh, my tweet, by the way, is at VC Salford. I need a few more followers, so I'd be very happy if anybody would sign up. It's one of my performance metrics now uh, with my chair of council, how many followers I have on Twitter. Um, so anybody here would be welcome, and I'll follow you back if you follow me. Um, so, 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 so networks connect us. Networks, networks connect us across the world, and they do that through these digital flows of information that come into these extraordinary centres that we call cities. But, and this is the bit that I want to get to uh, as I begin to uh, end off what I've got to say. They're also places of change and of fault lines and contradictions. What I dislike most are these rose-tinted spectacle versions of cities that come out in these sort of wonderful corporate architects' dreams of potted plants and perfect corporate architecture. Bad things happen in cities. Cities are places of contradiction. They're places of rapid, rapid change, of course. Many of you here might identify with this sort of image. You've only got to go into the Apple store, of course, to see this happening. You know, those of us who have these new Apple devices who don't quite know how to configure our, uh, our Twitter account, go in with one of those genius people that you wait three weeks to see, uh, and they help you. But the kids, you watch what the kids do. You watch what the three-year-olds do. Off they go like that. They go to the table. They go straight to the iPads, and they're in there straight away. They know what they're doing. There's one of them there. So cities are places of extraordinarily rapid change. They're places of fault lines. They're places of inequality. They're places which don't add up. We shouldn't be afraid of these contradictions. We shouldn't describe. We shouldn't, we shouldn't deny them. One of the flip sides of Manchester is that life expectancy across the city of Manchester today, for South Manchester and North Manchester, is 10 whole years. People live, on average, 10 years less in North Manchester than they do in South Manchester. That is shocking. And it is something that universities like mine should be addressing all the time in the work that we're doing. And it's something that the superheroes of the future have to address for all of our sakes. Out of all of that contradiction, though, comes creativity, comes the sort of energy that leads really exciting and interesting things to happen. My university is one of the best in the country for popular music. Go down to the old pint pot uh, by the Irwell at some stage and you'll see some of this stuff uh, that goes on. Um, creativity, popular music, contemporary music, contemporary art, doesn't come out of corporate environments. It doesn't come out with respect from places like Dubai where everything is five years, years old and corporately organized. It comes out of ruins, it comes out of contradictions, it comes out of, the, uh, comes out of the inspiration of mean streets. And this is the sort of creativity that drives the city on and makes it such a very exciting place to be. Because of that, 
The urban condition today, the place that we live in, the condition of living in the city is always uncertain. It's always adaptive. Bad stuff happens. The riots of August 2011 across British cities, great stuff happens. The sort of creativity that leads to great art, great music, great scientific inventions, great discoveries. It's the same here, it's the same across the world. Our cities are places that create meaning all the time. They are places where we have to be adaptive. We have to be constantly innovative to new forms of change. We have to invent things, we have to find new ways of doing things, we have to adapt creatively to those uh, challenges of uncertainty that we face constantly uh, as we go about our daily business. And above all else, cities are global destinations. They're places defined by the intersections of people, they're places which it is exciting to be, they're places of creativity, they're places of discovery. So when we think of those supermen and superwomen in the future, of the challenge that was set, set for us um, of invention, of changing our condition, of knowledge, of inventiveness, of discovery, of research, cities have a very special place in bringing people together and bringing all that talent together in one place uh, for our future and the future of our children. So thank you, uh, there's my, there's my um, okay, got it, down the bottom, <laughs> just in case you missed the spelling, right? Um, there's, um, there's my notion of where we're at. That's what I want my university to be, to respond to. That's why I think you find cities exciting, and that's what's exciting for us about sponsoring uh, TEDx here again for the third time in Salford, and thank you for listening to me.